Yes, give me more power! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to learn all about the plug slug. And this is the reason why you want to learn about the plug slug. That's right, that is 1600 watts for each plug slug for a total of 12,800 watts, which in effect means that this one plug slug wrench can produce more than six petroleum generators. And considering what it takes to get a petroleum generator online with either petroleum or ethanol, you are quickly going to discover that if you have the metals to support it, you definitely want a plug slug wrench in your colonies. Because even if we compare them with the power output potential, of the stone hatches and the coal that they produce, the plug slug is still the most power efficient critter in the game. And as an important note in most of my critter tutorials, if you haven't seen my hatch tutorial, please go check it out. It goes over a little bit more of the beginnings and presents itself as sort of an introduction to ranching itself. You'll still be able to get the gist either way, but it might help some of the newer players to check that video out first. Let's head over to our database and see what we can find out. The plug slug has a fairly decent livable range at minus 30 to 70. That doesn't seem to be much of a problem for us. They drop the same amount of meat as a standard hatch, but the big difference is what they eat and then what they produce. And we'll start off looking at the ores. They consume 60 kilograms of an ore every cycle and they produce 3 kilos of hydrogen. And that includes iron ore, gold amalgam, aluminum ore, cobalt ore, and copper ore. And if you compare that to a standard stone hatch that can also eat ores, the stone hatch consumes 140 kilos worth of ore and produces 35 kilos worth of coal. So in just that comparison, you can see that the plug slug eats a lot less than your hatch does. Taking a look at one of our standard tame plug slugs, we can see that they live to be 100 cycles old, much like the hatch, and their reproduction rates are identical to hatches as well, with a tame plug slug producing an egg every 5.88 cycles. And the reason why we're talking about plug slugs today is because in the recent patch, a few things changed about the plug slugs. First, they can't be drowned anymore. So even when you get a ranch going, you might as well not bother putting them into a drowning chamber. Second, they now have a couple of variants. First, the smog slug, and second, the sponge slug. But the most significant change is the fact that they can now eat refined metals. Whether that be copper, tungsten, lead, gold, cobalt, even depleted uranium, iron, and aluminum. And this is significant because refined metals are infinitely sustainable on the planetoid without ever having to go to space in the form of metal volcanoes. Now the plug slugs sleep at night and when they do, if they're tame and happy, they're gonna give you 1600 watts a piece. And the key emphasis being happy because an unhappy plug slug only produces between 80 and 320 watts. And then wild plug slugs can produce all the way up to 400 watts under some fairly specific conditions because once again, they have to be happy. By continuing to look at this chart that we got from the Oxygen Not Included Wiki, you can see the great potential for that tamed and happy plug slug. But between me and you, I wouldn't get too comfortable with this, because I believe one day this is going to be nerfed. For the simple reason, as we said before, this one ranch produces more power than six petroleum generators. And remember, each one of those petroleum generators requires two kilos per second of a combustible liquid whether that being petroleum or ethanol. And for comparison, a molten slickster, when properly fed and maintained, will give you 10 kilos worth of petroleum per cycle. So to run a petroleum generator flat out requires 120 molten slicksters. Now granted, nighttime only lasts 75 seconds, which is only 12.5% worth a cycle. But even if we only wanted to run a petroleum generator for 12.5% of a cycle, we would still need 15 molten slicksters, and that's only to run one petroleum generator at 12.5% per cycle. And if you want to compare ethanol, we can do that too. Yes, it would only take one ethanol distillery to produce enough ethanol to run a petroleum generator 25% of the time, so we can say all we would need to do to compare it appropriately to the plug slug ranch is consider that we only need a half of an ethanol distillery. Well, one half of an ethanol distillery requires 500 grams worth of lumber per second. And in order to do that with arbor trees, if they were domestically grown, it would take at least one arbor tree being grown. 
and all the polluted water that it takes. If you wanted to grow them wild, it would still take you three and a half arbor trees to run one ethanol distiller 50% of the time in order to be able to run one petroleum generator 12.5% of the time. Now take all of that and multiply it times six. Add in all the polluted water and dirt required to run those trees domestically or the amount of hips and time it would take to plant them wild. Add in some more time to harvest the lumber and the dupe labor requirement to set all that up and you finally get the amount of power produced by one stable full of slug plugs. So long story short with the comparison is if you have the ores or the refined metal, not only is this process more efficient, it also requires less resources to get going and significantly less dupe labor because this only requires one rancher to come in here and groom the plug slugs. But even better, despite just the power output that the plug slugs produce after they eat the metal ores in the form of hydrogen, we can then take that hydrogen and power some hydrogen generators. In this case here, I have all the hydrogen going over to the first of the variants to talk about. And that's the smog slug. Whenever a plug slug is in an unbreathable atmosphere, such as the hydrogen they produce after eating, their chances to lay a smog slug egg increase. Likewise, if they're dwelling in liquid, their chance to lay a sponge slug egg increase. And both these variants do something similar as the plug slugs, albeit not nearly as sexy. The smog slug absorbs unbreathable gases during the day and then deposits them into a gas pipe at night. The sponge slug absorbs liquids and then deposits them in a liquid pipe. Now all these pipes need to be two tiles distance away from the ceiling because at night the slugs go to the ceiling and hang upside down. Here it is nighttime and all the plug slugs are finishing up eating, finishing up their grooming and then heading up to the ceiling. Well they'll find an open slot and then hang upside down. All this potential power that they can produce makes it important that you have a nice battery system available for the plug slugs power to go into much in the same way we do with solar panels and the solar panels are an important note because they go really well with the plug slugs whereas the solar panels absorb light during the day providing power for our colony the plug slugs produce power at night so it's possible to run your entire colony with 100 percent uptime power using plug slugs and solar panels of course if you have enough batteries to save all the power that the plug slugs are producing there's no reason why you can't run your entire colony off of just plug slugs. Of course, there is one large limiting factor, and that once again has to do with the amount of metal that they eat per cycle at 60 kilos per plug slug. The plug slugs are identical to hatches in the fact that you can spit eight of them inside one 96 tile ranch, which means for a 96 tile stable, supporting eight plug slugs you need 480 kilos worth of metal almost a half a ton per cycle breaking that down into a kilos per second you need 0.8 kilos or 800 grams per second of a metal ore or refined metal to support one ranch so you may be thinking to yourself yeah i may not have an infinite supply of ores but if i have a metal volcano surely i can come up with 800 grams per second well, I am sorry to report that if you don't have at least three refined metal volcanoes on your colony, chances are you're not going to be able to do it. This analyzed aluminum volcano, for instance, only gives us 330 grams of aluminum per second with its calculated average output. And while, yeah, the volcano produces 7.8 kilos per second, it only does it for a very short time during each eruption period. Hence the reason the relatively low calculated average output. In fact, using debug mode, I spawned a bunch of volcanoes. And the most I found was around 330 grams per second. So it's very likely you're going to need at least three volcanoes in order to make your plug slug ranch work. But there's nothing to say that you have to run eight plug slugs. For instance, if you have one good metal volcano, you can run three plug slugs and it'd still be a great source of power for your colony. There's always, of course, the option of hitting the star map and colonizing one of the planetoids that has a lot of metal volcanoes or even utilizing some of the ore fields that can provide you with a steady stream of cobalt or copper ore. In fact, the gilded asteroid will even give you 25% gold. So it might be a possibility if you have cargo rockets going back and forth often enough. All right, Echo, you've convinced me I want to live the good life and run plug slugs. 
What's the best way we go about doing that? Well, here's the stable design that I've come up with over a few iterations that I think works the best. Take note that we are exactly nine tiles wide. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, so you only need one auto sweeper to cover the entire stable's floor to catch any plug slug eggs. But two, that way every plug slug has a space to sleep on the wire that you're using to dump all that power in to your battery boxes. An important note about how they're laying. The area has to be available. Nothing can be blocking it. For instance, if we were to put a tile here and then a bin, no plug slug would be able to lay right here. The same goes for the sponge slug and the smog slug. Speaking of which, I haven't figured out a great use for the sponge slug or the smog slug. Yeah, they're fairly adept at moving gases and liquids around. You can see this one sponge slug has emptied half of this room, and all the hydrogen being dumped here from the ranch has completely made this gas reservoir chock full. So from my initial evaluation, I don't think they have as much of a use, especially as compared to the plug slug itself. More on this stable, we have all of our metals and ores coming in via a line and then dumping off into a conveyor receptacle. Here's my pretend volcano that keeps producing some aluminum. We just dump it into a conveyor loader and that way duplicates aren't responsible for filling up the critter feeder. That's just a nice to have and not necessarily required. We do have this conveyor loader down here taking all of the critter eggs and dumping them off into their own room with one incubator. Now just like the hatches, unincubated, unlullabied eggs only incubate at 5% per cycle, which means it would take you 20 cycles to produce one plug slug. So over the course of 100 cycles, you would need to replace all eight plug slugs so one incubator wouldn't be enough. Hence the reason you will want to lullaby and power your incubators if you only want to use one incubator, or if you don't want to power them at all, just use two incubators and you'll have plenty of plug slugs. As a reminder, every once in a while, you're going to want to come in here and kill all these critters because after a little while, there's going to be a lot of slug eggs in here. Instead of doing this system here, you of course can feed them to your egg cracker and start making some omelets. But I think it's easier and probably a little bit better just to every once in a while clear it all out, collect all the meat, and create barbecue from it just the same way you would with Drecos in a system similar to this. Now you'll notice we have airflow tiles on the top of the ranch. This way, as the slug plugs eat, that hydrogen is forced to climb to the very top here. We have one gas pump with a couple pieces of automation, one being a gas element sensor trying to detect hydrogen, the second being an Atmos sensor. So similar how we use the gas pumps in a full Rodriguez situation, we're just waiting for there to be enough hydrogen up here. That way, when we are siphoning out what we have, we're not getting too much oxygen. Now, you could modify this a little bit and put a couple of gas element sensors maybe here and here and wait until hydrogen's all the way full at this point before turning the gas pump on. And that way you have nothing but hydrogen. And in that case, you wouldn't even need the gas filter. You just need to make sure that you have the ambient pressure set high enough to where you are confident that the hydrogen is at least down to this point so the gas pump doesn't get any oxygen. Lots of ways to skin this pip. I like to keep it simple though and use a gas filter. They only cost 120 watts and we've already shown how much power we're gonna be producing out of this system, so it's not too shabby. But using the gas filter, it also gives you an opportunity to take that oxygen and send it back down here to the bottom of the stable. Now this is important. We're not using any suits or anything, so the duplicates will be using this oxygen and creating carbon dioxide. And that's very much by design. By taking all the oxygen, sending it right back into the stable, note that you'll still need another source of oxygen because the duplicates, again, will be breathing this. It helps make sure that the carbon dioxide doesn't rise and stays firm at the bottom. And that's an important element to this system. We are using sort of a gas lock here to make sure that when the hydrogen is produced by the plug slugs, it only goes up because with there being both carbon dioxide and oxygen present at the bottom of the stable, the hydrogen's not gonna be able to break through both the oxygen and through the carbon dioxide that's naturally gonna be sitting in this sort of gas lock so we don't have to worry about it. I also throw an airflow tile in here, that way any sort of carbon dioxide that's naturally produced in here will eventually be able to spill out over the side, but still leaving enough in this sort of V here to once again make sure that hydrogen is forced upwards. And it's important that we set up the ranch that way because remember, if these plug slugs end up sitting in any of this hydrogen, it's gonna increase the chances that they're gonna lay a smog slug egg. And if you didn't do anything about it long enough, 
you wouldn't have enough eggs to keep your wonderful ranch full. Remember, you can take all that hydrogen and feed it directly to a hydrogen generator, which only adds more to the amount of power that the plug slugs are actually producing in every cycle. If, of course, you hit the volcano lottery and have enough metals to do so. So I think that's about it when it comes to ranching plug slugs and having a decent stable design to maximize the efficiency of the power gain and the hydrogen collection. I know we didn't cover the smog slug or the sponge slug in too much detail, but like I said before, I'm not exactly sure what to do with them. So let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas on how you might put them to use in your colony. So I hope I was able to teach you a thing or two about plug slugs. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial in the comments below and what other tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you soon.